Good morning, Sheriff Steve Prater. Welcome back to Keel. Thank you for taking time for us once again. Sure, no problem, no problem. Big meeting yesterday. You go ahead. The sheriff, you sat down with the police chief, with city leader, a whole bunch. Tell us who was in the room. Golly, you don't have that much time. You <laughs> bumped me again the time I got through that. Everybody that needed to be there was there? There was nobody yeah. absent? No, everybody was there. The city marshal represented uh, the police. Uh, state police had three or four people there. I had, had a few. Uh, the city and the parish commissioners were there, and, and a few journalists, and, and et cetera. The, did, is it accurate to say that the city leaders, the chief, et cetera, said they really don't need the funding help. Is that accurate? Well, they, they weren't offered the funding help, I don't believe, as far as manpower. It's kind of a, it's kind of a confusing scenario. Uh, the way that it all started was that the, there was a, a public outcry or something, or, or I don't know how loud it was, but that, the, that we should come in and help the city with their crime problem. So uh, over a year ago, met with the chief, and he said he didn't really think they needed our help in, in the city. And so it kind of went by the way. Then the commission comes up, and they want to do something to help with the crime months later. So they uh, they come up with a, uh, I think Stephen Jackson came up with a shot spotter uh, concept, which is... Uh, it, it just identifies where gunshots are. And so from that came the idea, well, if we have that much money, why don't we just pay the sheriff to go inside because our budget, we don't have enough to, to uh, start patrolling in the city. And so from that came the idea of, okay, we got this money, we'll pay the sheriff to go inside, but the police department doesn't need the sheriff to go inside, according to the police department. And so it, it's just been like, like, uh, well, like I said before, herding cats and, and or juggling balls or something. It's, uh, so that's where it stands is is that we stand ready to help in any way possible, as does the state police, as does the city marshal. Uh, we're helping in some ways already uh, and have been over the years, and we're proud of all that we do in the in the city. Uh, and Mr. That's about uh, it. Early on, there had been a little, uh, the, would I be wrong in saying that the SPD, at least, uh, and maybe even the mayor, had been a little reticent to have your assistance, your help, your aid. Do you sense that the Shreveport Police is softening a little bit on that idea? No. Uh, not really. I mean, they're, they, it, it's, I mean, you'd be foolish politically and practically to say, I don't want your help. Okay, and so that's they're saying, sure, we'll take all the help we can get, but nobody identifies that help. And so that's where we stand is we're ready to help. They said they'll take the help, but we can't design the program that that's going. We don't have their numbers or their manpower allocation or anything else. And that's that's really the chief's job and that's his prerogative and that's the mayor's. And uh, and I respect that. And and so, uh, if they come to us and want something, we will uh, analyze it very quickly and and see if that's what we can. If we think that will make an impact, if they need something in an emergency basis, we will jump through ourselves to get it to them. The the mayor said in the city council meeting a couple of weeks ago, and and I'm I'm almost direct quoting. She said, "We have our people meeting with your people." developing a plan okay right what's the plan we can develop a plan all day that doesn't keep people from shooting and, and is there really is a plan? there really a plan being developed uh do you let me let me see do you want the steve prater version oh want absolutely the politically correct i want version? the steve prater version no there's no plan do you even have people meeting with her people to talk about it? Yes, my my chief deputy and myself met with uh, uh, the assistant chief, uh, Bill Gooden. Uh, we met and, and came up with this warrant roundup that we just finished. Uh, but there's there's no plan to to uh, in going forward. There's no real plan to 
that's going to impact crime. We'll, we may do an operation here or there, uh, but it'll be a, a you know, a time sensitive thing. It won't be a permanent thing. And, and, uh, and like I say, I'm not, I've been asked, what would I do if I was the police chief? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not going to answer that. And, and that's not fair to him. Uh, and it's not, you know, it's just not, not necessary to, to, uh, you know, to step but, on any but, toes. But if, but if I could come to you as the sheriff, I'm the, pretend like I'm the chief, okay? okay. God bless right. our city. But if I come to you and I say, uh, Steve, I need you to help me. I need 10 of your deputies to help patrol Shreveport's high crime neighborhoods between 9 or 10 o'clock at night and 6 o'clock in the morning. Can you do that for me, Steve? And we'll find some funding. Can you do it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why isn't that a start? That's not a question for me. But you could do it tomorrow. Well. With the money, if the money's there. Yeah. yeah. Figured to be speaking tomorrow, probably be Monday next week. And for someone from the city to say, well, the deputies really don't know those neighborhoods. They don't know our percent. I mean, how do you respond to that? The deputies are as well trained and qualified as as any Shreveport policeman. Uh, very proud of the deputies. They're, they they uh, they do a great job, and uh, and and they're very comparable. They're comparably paid. Um, uh, you know, and and like I say, the Shreveport Police Department is a, is a great organization with great officers, uh, as is the Caddo Sheriff's Office, and. Uh, so to say that we're, you know, I mean, I hope nobody would ever say that we're not trained, experienced, or prepared to do that. You know, you're not gonna work for Steve Prater if you can't if you can't do whatever it takes. Excuse me, Steve. If it sounds to me, and I, I certainly don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds to me like you're saying that that there's a lot of better ways you could have spent yesterday afternoon. If you feel that way, and tell me if I'm wrong, but if you feel that way, do you think that the city marshal people that were there, the state police people that were there, all of the other law enforcement folks other than yourself, yourself, do you think they felt the same way? I know they, I know they did, at least with the comments that they, and I won't say each, I won't say the city marshal's office, the state police, but I'll say other law enforcement people and leaders in there, as well as commissioners as well as uh, people, some journalists and civic city people and commissioners all said, uh, as we left, this is, you know, this is a waste of time. We're sorry. Sorry we got had to get, sorry we got y'all together. Sheriff, can you be John Q. Citizen and not Sheriff for just a moment for me? I'll give it a shot. Okay. You're going to have to take a deep breath here. Um, hey. Chief Alan Crump is joining us in the 8 o'clock hour. Okay. And you're John Q. Citizen, and you live in Queensboro. What, okay. do you, what do you ask him this morning? Hmm. That, Aaron, that was a sneaky way to try to get me something that, say something that I couldn't. You're not the <laughs> sheriff. You're not the sheriff. You're John Q. Citizen. I, I, no, but that's, that's not a, <clears throat> yeah, no, no, I, I better not. I don't want to get into all that because really that's not that's not my place, and and uh. Excuse me, Steve. And, just for future reference, let's remember it was her that did that, <laughs> and not no, I me. Know she wasn't trying to. She wasn't trying to trick me because she knew that even though I went to Northwood, I'm at Sharp. No, <laughs> no, that could never happen. I, I just, I, I, I'm. I, you hear it in my voice. I'm perplexed at, at seeing you guys get together and see and hearing everybody talk about fighting crime. And we've been talking about this for six months, and nobody seems to be doing anything except having meetings. I hope y'all love each other because you meet the freaking out the wazoo. Or at the end of the day, Shreveport Police <laughs> just doesn't want your help, and and but nobody will come out and say it. Or you come out and say no. I'm we got saying, this. I'm, I'm I'm saying it. I'm saying this that they don't need our help is what they're saying, and that we are and the state police and the city marshal are 
you know, we're in the starting blocks. If you need us, we're there for you. And call us if you need us. It's not any of the three of our places to go in, and you couldn't practically do it anyway, Mm -hmm. and to go in and take over, uh, you know, to to jump in that briar patch and and take over law enforcement in in the city of Shreveport. The city, city, city charter establishes the police department to do that, and that's the primary and then if anything goes wrong or whatever and things aren't, uh, you know, then, then there's mechanisms whereby the sheriff and the state police come in if, if things are not, uh, you know, things are done illegally, things are being avoided or, or investigating uh, corruption or things like that. We come in anytime we want to, but we don't have the manpower and we don't have the tax base to come in and patrol in Shreveport. Uh, I know the city, the city, sometimes people in the city say, well, we pay parish taxes too. But what happens is if there's a burglary arrest made in the city of Shreveport by the city police department, they then bring that burglary suspect to us. Mm -hmm. We then have to keep that person in jail. We have to transport them back and forth to court. We have to maintain the jail and all of their medical, all of their everything else that has to be done and feed and, and keep them. We have to deliver all the subpoenas for that court case. We have to protect the courtrooms and the judges. We have to serve all the papers and civil papers and collect all the taxes. So that's, that part is what the people in the city get from the parish. Uh, and so the actual patrolling part is what the city taxes go for.